I don't usually comment too much on anything that goes on with Israel. Not because I don't have very deep beliefs and convictions, but there's no way to just argue it from a so-called political viewpoint. It also has to be argued from a biblical viewpoint. So here we go. It's just awful. Children are being killed, and this is all Israel's fault, and they got to stop, and the president's got to put pressure on them to make them stop. That's not the full story, but that is the narrative, and that is what gets everybody all worked up, and let me just say right out the gate, nobody wants to see children killed. But there's more to the story than just this very surfacey type narrative, which the left is just running away with, and even some people on the so-called right are also chiming in using the same talking points. Case in point, Jimmy Dore. There's a lot Jimmy and I agree on. I, I agree with him. We really, for the most part, stay out of the Middle East. We just tend to muck it up and, and just make matters worse over there. Agree. Uh, I agree. We had no business doing anything with regard to Syria. Uh, I have said right from the beginning, when McCain was all outraged that, that President Trump was not dealing with Assad, when there's more evidence than ample to prove that the so-called freedom fighters were the ones actually gassing people because they are actually part of the anti-American, but they'll take our money and take our weapons, and they want Assad gone, and if they can use us as the willing stooges to make that happen, they're perfectly willing to gas their own people, even eat their body parts on camera, which you saw the one soldier tear the other guy's chest open, rip his heart out, and take a bite out of it like he was eating an apple. I mean, these are some deranged individuals with a warped 4th century mindset when it comes to their religious zeal and, and jihad bullhock. That's what we're dealing with over there. And I would just assume we just stay out of it completely. And the amazing thing is, the left doesn't want to talk about that's what Donald Trump wanted to do. He wanted to bring our troops home, and immediately Nancy Botox Pelosi and Chuck E. Cheese Schumer and willing dupes from the rhino side of the aisle went along with legislation that basically handcuffs any president from just unilaterally himself as the commander-in-chief, which he is empowered by the Constitution to be, to withdraw our troops. It now requires congressional approval. So Donald Trump wanting to bring troops out of the Middle East, no, no, nay, nay. And we heard all the war hawks, even on the right, and they're flying again. George Bush out there talking about Biden pulling troops out of Afghanistan and out of Iraq, that this is going to be a bad thing. Bad, 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 bad. And, you know, here come the talking points, going to create the vacuum. And Lindsey Graham, John McCain's special friend, will be out there beating that same mantra. And to a certain degree, the reason Biden isn't putting any real pressure on Israel is he wants things to escalate because he and the military-industrial complex want the excuse to send waves of troops back in and reestablish ourselves there. And again, it's not about winning anything. It's about the fact that all of these military defense contractors and all of these people that seem to make money and know how to profit off the pain and suffering of others, and they give a lot of money to the political establishment, whether they are on the left side of the aisle or right side of the aisle, they are ready to be back in power because they got dethroned under Donald J. Trump. And now that they successfully all colluded together to get the orange man out of there, now that they got dementia Joe Obama in there, it's going to be status quo, back to business as usual, and we got to be at war with somebody because, after all, there's money to be made. That is the sick, twisted reason of, of what's happening right now. But let's go ahead and break this down. Jimmy Dore, who, again, as I've said, I agree with him a lot, but there are things that we are just ideologically at complete polar opposites, and... Israel 
is one of them. What's going on in the Israel? I hope if you don't know, uh, Israel's bombing the shit out of neighborhoods, just regular people killing kids, whatever. And uh, it could stop like that if Joe Biden said so. Uh, the number of reported bombings in the past 24 hours is horrific. These are the bombings. Uh, Two million people trapped inside a tiny strip of land already facing perpetual shortages of essential medicines because of Israel's illegal blockade mercilessly bombed on the holiday of Eid. This is one of the most defense densely populated places on earth. Denser than London. And about half the population is under 18. And there's your bombings. Wow. You know, first he goes for the emotional aspect. Killing children. Nobody wants to see children killed. And then the, the illegal blockade. Wait a minute. Whoa, see, now this is where we got to back up the crazy train before we all go off the cliff into the abyss of stupidity and misinformation and ill-informed. Okay, this is where I have to wax a little bit biblical. Do you understand why the Arabs and Jews hate each other? The Muslims and Jews hate each other? The Palestinians and the Jews hate each other? Do you, do you understand what this all is? It's a family feud. And it goes back centuries to Abraham, the father of the Jewish nation. God made a covenant with Abraham, saying, From your seed I am going to birth a nation. Well, at the time, Abraham, thinking that his wife being 90 years old, there's no way she can conceive. So he and his wife hatch up this plan that he'll just go ahead and have sex with his wife's chambermaid, and then that way he'll have a son, and that son will become the fulfillment of this prophecy made with God. And so, sure enough, he has sex with the uh, chambermaid, and poof, we have a son. But now we got another problem, because his real wife, Sarah, at age 90, she actually conceives a child. And so now we've got this problem. We've got two women under the same roof, each with children by the same dad. And do you already see how this is like a really bad TV soap opera? So wife Sarah wants Abraham to kick out the chambermaid and the illegitimate son. And he does. Because now he's got the real son by the real wife. And this will be the fulfillment of the prophecy that God made with them. And yes, from this son, Isaac, would come the Jewish people. But what about the chambermaid? What about her son? Well, God took pity on them. This was no fault of theirs. This was, again, when man thinks he's going to help out God and he alters the plan. So God pronounces that of your child... You too will birth a great nation, but not as great. And that was not a punishment on the child. It was God had made a covenant. And God is a God of covenants, a God of contracts. He made a covenant with Abraham. And he had a specific way he wanted this done. Abraham altered the plan and got everything screwed up. So now we have Abraham's son Isaac birthing the Jewish nation. And we have the other son, Ishmael, birthing the Arab-slash-Muslim nations. In Genesis 12, God gives a plot of ground specifically to Abraham and Abraham's descendants, i.e. the Jewish people. We call that land Israel. It's theirs. It is outlined in scripture, even the borders, the river markings, the mountain markings. We know exactly where it is on the map. God gave that to the descendants of Abraham. The problem is we have two groups of people who are claiming to be the descendants of Abraham. The Jews and the Arabs. And they're both laying claim to the same plot of dirt. But here's the issue. 
God made the covenant with Abraham for his direct descendants that would be his people. And that is the Jews. So Israel belongs to the Jews. Period. It's their land. They were conquered and scattered and they regathered and they were conquered and scattered again. That has been the plight of the Jewish people for centuries. Conquered by Egypt, conquered by Babylon. Adolf Hitler almost erased them from the map. And in 1948, Jewish people from here and all around the world were allowed to gather again in their homeland, outlined in the book of Genesis as theirs. Well, because of all of the wars and all of the, the anti-Semitic treatment that they had received through the centuries, they had been scattered to the wind. Other people moved into their property. In fact, if you know anything at all other than the Cecil B. DeMille movie of the Ten Commandments and Charlton Heston, you get the basic story that one of Moses' jobs was to take all of those Jewish slaves out of Egypt who built the pyramids and to take them to the, quote, promised land. He got to the threshold of the promised land. He himself sinned, couldn't take them in. So God called Joshua to lead the people back into what's now Israel, the promised land. But because they'd been gone for 400 plus years, other countries had moved in. And there were wars because God said that your land, get these other people out of there. I know we don't like this, but that's how it works. And that's what we're seeing today. In 1948, the Jews repossessed their land and some of it, this little strip we're arguing about now, the Gaza, uh, even though it was the Jews, it was theirs, they were willing to live there and, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, pay rent to live on their own land. And they did. Till the king of Jordan decided, you gotta go. And he kicked them out and gave it to the Palestinians. And then we had more war. And Israel got that land back, and then the, the contract reversed. Israel said, fine, you Arabs want to stay here, you'll now pay us for the privilege of being there. Again, this is, this is a family feud that goes back centuries. It is two half-brothers fighting for the love of one father, Abraham. Ever had a family feud? You got bad blood in your family? Sometimes it's gone on for years, maybe even decades. In fact, it gets to a point where not everybody really even fully understands how it happened or why it's happening, but it's happening. And the Bible's really clear about this. The non-Jews of that region hate the Jews, hate them. And Jesus said, there'll, there'll be no peace in the Middle East till Jesus said, I return. And again, that's the biblical, that's the theological. And I don't care what your particular belief system is. I'm telling you, that's what the Word of God has to say. And all you have to do is take a look around. And every time we try to broker any type of peace over there, it lasts all of about 15 minutes. But what's happening right now is Israel defending itself. No, they're, they're bombing children. We're talking about Hamas here. And I realize that Ilan Omar and AOC and the rest of that radical, verminous ilk, Rashida Tlaib, uh, I realize that uh, they want to refer to Israel as an act of aggression. And oh, these poor little Hamas children. This is a terrorist organization that for decades has said their number one goal is to erase Israel from the map. Does that include children? See, Jimmy Dore has conveniently forgotten, as has apparently Geraldo Rivera over on Fauxpas News, formerly known as Fox News, they have conveniently forgotten the suicide bombers that have gone into schools in Israel, gone onto public transit buses, and killed all kinds of civilians. They have forgotten that this vermin that we're fighting, and again, 
one of the things that slowed down any progress we actually had in the very beginning of the Gulf War was the fact that we were playing for the TV cameras. And because we were playing for the TV cameras, you know, we couldn't hit strategic targets because they were using hospitals and schools. This vermin rabble over there, they hide behind civilians. And you're really not going to like this. You're really going to hate this. Unfortunately, the civilian targets have got to be hit. If you're going to stop the evil, that's going to happen. Hey, World War II, good thing it wasn't fought on CNN, or we'd still be fighting Hitler. We carpet-bombed Berlin and other major cities in Germany. We carpet-bombed them into nothing but piles of rubble. How many civilians lost their lives? How many children lost limbs? Nagasaki, Hiroshima. How many civilians died? And it's an awful thing, and nobody is advocating that, and nobody wants that. And again, that's why I keep saying stay out of there completely. Nobody wants that. But unfortunately, the way war works is this, beloved. One side has to determine we have got to come in here with such force that we don't miss this. We destroy the will of our opposition to fight back. And that is quite simply what Israel's doing. They are fighting with a force of saying, don't fight back, lay down your weapons, and let's end this thing. And again, this isn't about uh, getting into all the nitty-gritty of the political aspect of this. This is how it works. This is what's happening. But what's perpetuating all this right now? Why is Hamas doing this now? Why won't Israel stop and, and stop bombing it? Why? Because, number one, Hamas is again using human shields, innocent civilians as cover, and Israel has said, we're sick of this. But this is Iran. Bum, ba -dum, bum. You know, that little nation that Barack Misobotamus and, and now his little cuckold of a puppet president continuation sequel, Obama Biden. You know, they put all kinds of money on planes and flew it into Iran to bribe them. And what did... Donald Trump do? He took out one of their top generals, Soleimani. This is payback for that. And notice they didn't try any of this while Donald Trump was still in the White House. They knew better. They knew there would be swift retaliation. You know, Ronald Reagan rebuilt the military. And other than, you know, a little skirmish down in Grenada, um... Nobody really tested Ronald Reagan. Why? They knew that, quote, the cowboy in the Oval Office wasn't going to take no guff. Why do you think Kim Jong-un backed down to Donald Trump? Why do you think that the Trump administration was actually able to get some peace accords through in the Middle East? Why do you think he was able to de-escalate and even pull troops out of there? And basically, nobody else messed with us. Because they knew the guy at the helm would take action. You, you think anybody in the world thinks that doddering, drooling, dementia Joe Bama Biden is going to do a thing? And if he does, he's going to side against our number one ally in that region. Said it before, I'll say it again. Pull our troops out of there completely, give Israel weapons and some financial aid, and let them handle things over there. They are much better equipped to deal with it than we are. They live there. This is, these are their families they're protecting. Because make no mistake about it, these 4th century thinking barbarians over there who would rape, butcher, pillage, and murder, and, and Jimmy Dore is, is crying for them? Give me a break. Seriously, give me a break. 
again, why this is being allowed to escalate, the Biden administration knows full well that Iran is stoking the fires of Hamas, its retaliation. And right now, you would think, well, maybe Biden should just come out and blame this on Trump. And No, 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 no. Because the military-industrial complex, they want this. They want the excuse to send our troops in. They want the excuse so they can start making big money again. Bum, ba dum bum. And as Lily Tomlin used to say, and that's the truth. Hey, that's today's rant. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure you share this to your social media platforms. Click the word all to get notification of my next rant.